When fighters make it to the top of the sport, there are sometimes only certain fights that can satisfy the appetite of the fighters and the fans alike. Two pioneers, two Olympians, two record breakers, the moment of truth, Natasha Jonas, two-weight world champion, Michaela Mayer, former unified world champion. Welcome to Head to Head. Tasha, Michaela, let's start by saying I think the boxing world is in absolute agreement that this is the epitome of a 50-50. A legacy fight, the winner here concretes their legacy. Um, Michaela, I'll come to you first. Why did you want this fight? Well, a couple of reasons. Um, I wanted another shot at a world title. I want to be in big world title fights, right? And this last year was sort of slow for me. I had to take a step back. And this was the most feasible fight for me. This And the easiest fight to get done because Katie Taylor was caught up at 135. Chantel Cameron was caught up at 140. And I didn't want to sit around and wait. And when Top Rank mentioned that what did I think about going all the way up to 147, which I always planned on doing, but just maybe not this soon, um, and going against Tasha Jonas, I said, yeah, let's do it, let's make it happen. And it's funny that everyone's like looking this, at such a build up for this fight, or so excited for this fight, because there really wasn't any build up because it was so easy to make. Tasha, why did you take this fight? I mean, you had every option. Um, why this one? I think she's a good name to have on my record. Um, she's a class fighter in herself. And yeah, it's just a fight I believe I can win. Would she be the biggest name on your record? I wouldn't say she was the biggest. She'd definitely be the biggest scout. What do you think of Michaela as, as a fighter? She's a good fighter. She's got, you know, good amateur pedigree. She's good knowledge. Um, she's explosive, she's quick. She's got lots of, you know, good assets. But whether she boxes or whether she fights, I just believe I'm better. Michaela, how good is Tasha? Um, I think that she has a ton of experience, right? So it's like, I think one thing I think about with her is it's going to be hard to take her into a place that she hasn't been because she has fought a lot of different styles and, and the amateurs coming up with that type of pedigree and then, you know, the, the fights she's had um, in the past, the lower weights, uh, good fighter. I do think, however, she hasn't had a tough fight in a while because the girls that she's fought at these heavier weights haven't really had the pedigree that the girls the smaller weights have had or, or what I bring to the table. So um, even though I've been fighting at smaller weights this, uh, all these years and she may not think that I have uh, the size or the strength to hang at 147, I definitely have more skill than the girls she's boxed up these higher weights. You've definitely you got the size. Hmm? You definitely got I the definitely size. got the size, yeah. I was, I was hoping you, you saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think she's the best fighter you will have faced? On paper, she's definitely the best fighter because I have yet to face an Olympian um, or someone with her pedigree in the amateurs. And I think that, sep that really separates us. A lot of these girls who haven't had that amateur pedigree can't hang with the top girls this, in this era. And um, it's, it's, it's a whole other skill set. So... In the pros, yeah, but I'll let you know after the fight. You know, we'll see if she's the toughest. What's the, what's the weakest part of Tasha's game? What have you seen that you can exploit? Um, I think maybe uh, the, a little bit of predictability. Not so much when she was at a smaller weight, but now that she's at a bigger weight, I see I, I can sort of predict what she's going to throw and what she's going to do. And maybe that's because she hasn't gone up against, um, you know, very skilled opponents at that at that weight. So hopefully, I'll bring uh, the tougher side out in her, the better side out in her. I think that when I have a harder opponent, a tougher opponent always brings the better side out in me as well. So um, we'll see. But I, I feel like I can see what what I'll land. Tasha, where's this fight won and lost for you? Um. It's the same, same fight, the same places. I think you need a good start, you need a good middle, and you need a good end. So. Do you think that Michaela is going to bring anything that, not necessarily you haven't seen, but something you haven't seen in a while? Potentially, but I will say I, I had a 
almost a year out before the Terry Harper fight and I had almost a year out before the Katie fight and I still produced two of the better performances. So, you know, time out and I, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any difference for me. How would you rate Tasha's career up to now? Um, she's had a, a successful career, right? She's uh, got the fight that I always wanted, which was Katie Taylor and what a lot, a lot of women wanted. Um, had a great fight against Terry Harper. Uh, has been in the spotlight, obviously had a great run with Team GB. So she's had a great career. That's one of the reasons why I want to fight her because I want, like she said, girls like her on my resume and to put on big fights that I'm going to be inspired to train hard for and, and show up for. You've been a unified champion. You've won pretty much of the belt there is to win in the last few fights. Do you feel like you've had the better career thus far? I mean, it's just, just different. I jumped up. Arguably, you can say it's easy or whatever, but you know, physically, it's a little bit different. It's tougher. Um, I think the the lower weights are more. Um, there's more competition. I think there's better fighters, um, and that's the reason I want to go down. I, I jumped up for the opportunity, same as same as Michaela. Um, but I do intend, all intend, on going back down. Well, you've mentioned weight, Michaela. It's a new weight for you. Uh, how has the adjustment been? How do you feel and how do you think you'll feel on fight night? I feel great. I'm enjoying training camp. I just feel more energized and alert throughout um, the weeks of training, throughout sparring sessions. So I feel like I'm able to think more and in return I'm, I'm learning more, I'm, I'm retaining more. And I'm just excited to see how that, how that shows on, on fight night because it is my first time fighting at this weight class and I know these girls are going to be bigger and stronger. I have also been working on the boxing and not, I, I do like to duke it out a lot with my opponents and sit on the inside and work and I don't think I'll ever stop doing that because that's just me and that's what I love to do especially when I get into the heat of the fight but just boxing a little bit more and seeing things and setting things up which is why I want three minute rounds so I have time to build out that strategy. Um, but yeah, just uh, I feel really good. I feel better than I've ever felt. Tasha, you've made the jump up in weight already, uh, so you know what Michaela is going through. What are the pros and cons, um, and how can you take advantage of them? I think she's just mentioned all the pros it's everything that I went through. I just went through a bit sooner, so I've had that time to adapt and get used to it, and you know, feel the physicality of nat naturally bigger and heavier fighters. I was going to say they don't always say bigger is bigger is not always better, but would you say that there were also some cons that you had to go through carrying the extra weight? Yeah, no, definitely. I think, you know, you would both being at one, 130 and there's a whole, whole load different to being at one, 147. Um, getting your body used to, you know, at one, one, 130, you've, you're at your physical peak, yet you are depleted in some senses, but, you know, that's where you're comfortable, that's where you've boxed a lot of your life, but then, when you make that jump up, it's like someone giving you two ankle weights and you know telling you to still perform the same you that you was at this new weight, and you know you have to have time to adapt to that, and you have to adjust your boxing to suit that. Michaela, okay, it's not too long ago that Tasha was fighting at one thirty anyway, only a couple of years ago. Um, do you think she's a real world to weight, or or do you feel like actually she doesn't have that much of a size advantage? I don't think she has a size advantage over me. What she has is <laughs> what she has is the experience going up against heavier bodies. But I practice that in the gym. You know, I'm sparring heavy people in the gym. I've made the adjustments, and she's right. There are adjustments you have to make, and I've been conscious of those adjustments. But um, I think, like she said, she went up for the opportunity, but she's probably suited to be a 140 pounder. Tasha said that she doesn't think you can hurt her. Uh, do you just feel like your, your power is underestimated? I think that from cutting down to 130 for so many years, it takes a toll on your body. And it takes time to reverse that. And I've been doing everything I can to, in the gym and, you know, with my strength training and certain things, my nutrition, to try and make up for that, all those years of doing that. But it takes time, which is why I've taken this last year to slowly move up. And 
we'll see how it comes through at 147 on January 20th. We're going to have to see. But I know the longer that I stick to this plan, this regiment, um, that you're going to see it come through. Tasha, you're naturally bigger, although Michaela doesn't entirely agree. The scales say you've been campaigning at a higher weight for a longer time. Do you think she'll be able to take your power? She, only she'll know that. And we'll see on the night, like she says. Power? Do you feel like there's going to be anything that you have to get used to in the ring? Uh, no, I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not thinking of the power. I'm, I'm not fearing that she's going to be the able lie to detector, bully so me. she's lying. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> the lie not detector says she's lying. <laughs> um, I don't think she's going to be able to bully me and, and show her power. I think that it's going to be a lot more of a strategic fight than people think. I think it's going to be strategic because um, she's a lefty and I'm an orthodox and I haven't gone up against a lefty in my pro career. And there's different strategy that goes into fighting a lefty. She's used to it. She's been fighting orthodox mostly her whole life, so it's not much of a mix up, a switch up for her, but it is a switch up for me. So, um, but I mean, I've, I, like I said, I'm in the gym sparring round after round with, with guys rotating in on me, fresh guys. So I don't think that anything Natasha do, is going to do is going to hurt me. You haven't, you haven't fought a uh, uh, Southpaw as a pro, but you've obviously sparred loads and loads of them. There are often two types of fighters, ones that hate Southpaws and ones that relish fighting against them. Which do you feel like you fall into? Um, I questioned that when I started sparring Southpaws. And for this fight because it's been so long and I'm actually enjo really enjoying it. The lie detector says it's she's fun lying. For me. It's <laughs> fun for me because I'm able to start focusing on different things. You know, I've been doing the same thing for so long and it's fun for me to sort of switch it up. So um, I'm feeling confident about it. I'm excited for it, the challenge. Tasha, you're headlining in your hometown. Um, it must, it's, it's a big feeling, obviously, you've been waiting for this for a long time, but does it come with added pressure? Of course, um, but there's a, a fine line between pressure brings about a response and your response can be, you know, put, there's an optimal, like, there's an optimal like, thing of where you want to be and I'm experienced enough to know where that is. You can be, you know, fall apart. It can make fighters fall apart. It can give you anxiety. But, I, you know, I've, I've been in the Olympics here. I've been in um, Amir Khan on the card, the chief support, with the last chance to learn. It's not going to get any bigger and, and thingier than that. So, you know, I've been in them big events. I've handled myself well. And, you know, it, it is, it's, just another, it's just another occasion. Michaela, there's going to be thousands of scousers wanting Natasha to do a job on you. How are you going to deal with that atmosphere? Do you want to be able to understand them anyway? I think I can understand, boo. Um, I have had enough experience in this sport to know that all of the stuff that we're doing right now, everything leading up into that fight night goes out the window the second that bell rings. And so and none of it, none of it's going to matter. So I just got to pay no attention to it. Um, look for my supporters in the crowd. I know there'll be a few. I've been fighting out here for the last year, so I know I do have a, a good fan base out here as well. Um, but ultimately, I know that the fans are there for us and they're there to enjoy the fight. And I'm just going to block it out and go in there and do my thing. Can I just say, I genuinely hope that she doesn't get booed as well. I, hope, I genuinely hope there's a... I'm not saying a warm reception. They're obviously going <laughs> to they're gonna want me to win. But I genuinely hope that because I, I don't like watching fights and, you know, people putting themselves on the line and taking them, them big fights and then people get booed for it. I don't like it. Even when you're in the opposite Even corner? Even when I'm in the, in the opposite corner, I don't like it. Goes to show how much of a professional you are. Um, where does the winner go? What does this do for the winner, this, 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 this bout? How big is it for the victor? What's next or how big is it? Do we, do we, Both. You want to tell them or should I? You know, it just opens the whole lot of doors <laughs> of where you want to go and, and, and you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it gives you opportunity and, and it gives you a risk reward thing for, for other people to take. Not right away though, because we do have a rematch clause in the contract, so. If I lose. Both ways? 
if I lose. If you lose. Losing obviously is not something that you want to think about, but it is a, a reality of fighting. Where does the loser go? Rematch. I know that, that, that for me. I don't know about that for you, but you know, and, and, and the reason I asked for a rematch, I, it's not that I don't believe I can win. It's because if you look at recent, you know, myself, Terry Harper, I believe I won. Yourself, Barm Gardner, I genuinely believe you won. Um, you know, McCaskill and R Ryan, I believe Ryan won. And there's so many controversial decisions that people don't get for whatever reason, whatever politics and whatever it is. So I believe that I need, I need that just in case as an insurance policy, but I don't think I'll need it. Okay, like, I know you, you don't like to think about losing, but it's, it's, a, rela it's a reality that we're going to have to go through at some point. Somebody is going to have to go through it. Um, where do you go if you lose this fight? Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't thought about that because to me that's not an option. Like, I, I've seen what a setback can do, and I just don't, I don't have the time for another setback in my career. That's not me what either. I want for my career. Me I have a vision of where I want it to go. I have girls that I, that I want to check off my hit list. I have girls I really want to fight and big fights that I want to make for women's boxing. Um, you know, starting with Natasha, she's one of those fights. So if I want to continue to do that, I have to win. I, I couldn't tell you what a loss would do for my career. I, I, I can't even fathom that right now. So um, yeah, I don't know. Let's talk predictions then. Um, the first bell goes. What kind of fight are you expecting? I think the energy of the whole arena is going to kick us into gear right away. Um, I know that I have to start quick. I've got to win the first, like she said, the first in the middle and the end, especially being in enemy territory. Um, no, I'm in, I'm in her hometown. She's the champion. Um, and just not letting, not wanting to let any rounds slip out of my fingers because you just never know what the judges are looking at. Tasha, when you, uh, when you go to bed and you envision this fight, how does it go in your mind? It's a great fight and I win, and still. Are you expecting a, a chess match, a change of difference in, in, in stances, or are you expecting it to kind of gel straight away? I think you can, you'll, you'll never know, but like, like you said, you, you do like to get involved in a terror. Um, and yeah, I just, whatever she brings, However she brings it, I'll prepare for the best version of her and she'll prepare for the best version of me. That makes a good fight. Any final words to one another? Train hard. Bring your best. One thing we can all agree on is that it will be a fantastic fight, one for the ages and a legacy fight. Thanks to both of you for joining me. We'll get a handshake. <laughs>